In the context of a warming planet, access to cooling in many parts of the world is increasingly viewed as a societal need, supporting positive health outcomes, higher productivity, and accelerated economic development. However, in a world where over three billion people lack access to cooling, meeting this need will come at an environmental cost that we simply cannot afford. This is the dilemma that the Global Cooling Prize set to solve. So in 2018, RMI, along with the Government of India and Mission Innovation, launched the Global Cooling Prize to spur private sector innovation to identify residential cooling solutions that have five times lower climate impact than standard air conditioners sold in the market today, all without compromising comfort or affordability. Why five times? Simply this was what we calculated as necessary to neutralize the climate impact of the inevitable growth in cooling over the next three to four decades as the gap in access to cooling is closed. So the prize was not about incremental improvement, but identifying breakthrough technologies that could completely solve the cooling dilemma. And to be clear, five times lower climate impact means five of these new cooling solutions would have the same climate impact as just one of today's standard air conditioners. Over the following 12 months, we received 139 detailed technical applications from 31 different countries, from which we selected eight finalists to move to prototype development. Following six months of expansive testing, simulating real-world conditions, two finalists were declared winners, with both exceeding the prize's five times lower climate impact criteria and providing a life cycle cost at half that of the standard air conditioners. The two winners also happen to be two of the world's largest manufacturers of cooling products. Daikin with partner Nikon Sakai and Team Gri with partner Xinhua University. And they showed us what is possible and also signaled their intent to bring these technologies to market by 2025. But our work is not yet done. Through this process, we have learned that the standards we use to assess efficiency that were developed in the global north do not work so well in the global south, with one third of the performance improvements of the winning units were not able to be captured under the ISO SEER testing protocols. These relate to efficiency in dealing with latent loads or humidity and units typically operating at much lower aggregate capacity levels than those measured and extrapolated under SEER protocols. This has to be addressed. We also need to fuel a race to the top with policymakers, where we look to develop performance ladders with reference to the ceiling of performance, as opposed to the worst available technology or the floor of performance as is undertaken today. And of course, we now know how high the ceiling of performance actually is. In short, innovators and industry have done what we asked them to do. We now need policymakers to act in this, the decisive decade.